Hey everybody, I'm Bud. Welcome to Mental Game Mechanics, where we discuss how you can achieve more, do more, and be more using simple mental strategies and uh, simple mental strategies that optimize for peak performance. And so uh, today's topic is something that comes, uh, is kind of inspired by a, a, a awesome dude. Um, just incredible stuff that he's doing. Um, has a top rated podcast in the world. Um, I highly recommend you go listen to it. Uh, his name is Andy Frisella, and the, the podcast is called The MFCEO Project. Um, incredible value that they're providing. I recommend it highly. Um, one of the questions that he regularly asks the people that he's working with is, uh, is, do you want to win or are you afraid to lose? Now, everybody's different and they have different tolerances for both things, right? Some people really just want to win. And some people really hate to lose. And so I want to talk for just a minute about that balance, that teeter-totter of, of winning and losing and where do you fit in and how much do you want or don't want something, right? And as human beings, I think we're all driven by one of, one or the other. And it, it takes me back to my uh, shooting days. Um, my, one, of my, one of the competitions I went to a year and a half ago um, was up in Montana. Uh, it was the Mont Montana State Championship. Uh, it was sporting clays is what I do. It's shotguns shooting clay pigeons. And uh, it's, it's what I love doing. It's my, it's my deepest passion. I've been doing it since I was 12. I've been competing. I've been a nine-time All-American. Uh, two, time uh, two years in a row I shot for uh, the USA shooting team. And uh, anyway, um, just, just incredible experiences with all of that. It's, it's what I love to do. Um, I still compete, just not as much now. Um, eventually, I'll get back into, into the circuits. But um, back, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago, I went up to Montana State. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously a highly competitive person. I love to compete. I love to win. Um, I, it's what I want. I, I really want to win. And, you know, that's, that's my initial, you know, answer to that question. Do I want to win or do I, do I, am I afraid to lose? I, I want to win. I want to beat people. Like, it's just how I'm driven. And, uh, um, I went to Montana state shoot and, you know, I had, you know, several months of training that I did beforehand and I worked pretty hard. I was, I was out of the range pretty much two to three times a week. I mean, it's, it's not, I'm not going to go win a world championship training that little. Um, but it, you know, I felt at the time like it was, it was enough to build my mechanics, to get me in the flow, to get me to where I could just crank things out. And I was feeling really confident and feeling awesome. Everything was moving smooth. Um, you know, the gun was swinging well. Mentally, I had been prepping, you know, just practicing consistency, 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 you know, that, and that's, that's the thing is it's, it's, it's a lot like golf, except with a shotgun, very much a technical, you know, how do you swing, how do you move and, and work with the targets. And so I had to train all of that and, and build that practice, build that repetition and going into competition. Um, you know, the, the, the thing about it for me is that it's the one thing that I've been good at that most people can't beat me at. And it's, it's something that I hold dear to me that, you know, Hey, I love to do this because I can, I can win it and I'm good at it and I love it. And it's passionate. For, it's a passion for me. Um, you know, and, and this going to competitions, it's, it's my opportunity to show what I can do. And so as I got to Montana, uh, I got there and I was just ready to rip it. I was ready to go. You know, I was feeling very confident and uh, really just excited to, to win. I wanted to win so bad. Um, and uh, we got into like the first couple days of competition. And, you know, you, you're going to have bad and good days. And, you know, the first day was kind of slow for me. You know, just didn't wasn't feeling it for whatever reason, right? Like I said, going into it, I felt great got going and you know some wheels fell off the wagon so to speak and um you know it just kind of a rough start and i was like okay whatever that's you know first day's done let's let's move to second third and fourth day and and so i you know just did my mental thing and tried to try to do what i could um but m my heart was literally like racing with every single shot uh i had all this immense pressure and anxiety and just every time I went up to shoot, it was just like, <sighs> I had to just calm myself down. And it was, it, it was hard. It was, it was difficult, you know, performance. When somebody's in peak performance, it's not difficult for them. Okay. When you watch somebody who is in peak performance, they make it look easy. It's incredibly smooth. 
they just look like a pro. I mean, it's it's you watch some of the the highlights from Michael Jordan, highlights from Larry Bird, uh, highlights from Tiger Woods. I mean, they just make it look smooth like butter and easy. I mean, you, any athlete, any Olympic athlete, anybody who's performed well in anything, they make it look super smooth. And I wasn't that. I was all over the place. I was frustrated. I was you know not thinking clearly. I I mean, everything that you can imagine that would hinder performance was happening to me at this shoot. And I could not explain it except for the fact that I was just frustrated and that made me more frustrated that I was frustrated and it just totally, total, blah, terrible. Anyway, um, it, it hit me when Andy asked this question and I've heard it for the first time on his podcast. It, it, it kind of hit me there that, um, especially after the shoot because of what happened, right? It hit me that my want to win led me to being afraid to lose. Let me say that again. My want and desire to win the tournament led me to being afraid of losing. Because every time I shot and missed a target, I thought in the back of my mind, ah, crap, I can't afford to lose that target. Right, and it's the scores. The way they're designed is X's and O's, hits and miss, total score out of how many targets you shot. Okay, and every time I missed one, that's what went to the back of my mind: is what was my current score? Okay, I was so focused on what my score was going to be rather than what the process looked like to build the score, um, that I I was all over the place, right? And I was afraid of losing because I wanted to win so bad. The, the fear of losing was crushing me, okay? And so um, in, in competition, you have, to, you have to learn how to use pre- uh, pressure and stress and anxiety to your advantage. Um, it, it's something that, you know, anybody who's been successful, uh, I mean, you, you watch some of the highlights from, a, um, I, I can't think of the runner's name, but the Olympic athlete that uh, he, he fell and got way behind and I think his name was uh, Lassie or something back in the 70s. And he got, he got like two laps behind and the crowd started cheering for him. And he, he ended up lapping everybody twice and ended up winning the race. Even though he had fallen and gotten so far behind that nobody thought he was going to win. But the crowd was behind him and he just got his mind to it and just focused on getting the job done. Uh, he was able to use that pressure of being so far behind that he used it to his advantage to help him go and win. Now, that's incredible, right? That's a that's a that's a crazy story, and th- and there's so many of those. If you just if you just look for them, you can find them. And any any good athlete is going to tell you that performance comes when you use that pressure, that stress, that anxiety to your advantage, and you use it as a lever. As something to motivate you, something to push you to that next level. And so, for me, what I, you know, I've I've always been training my mind. I've always, you know, especially with the shooting game, a lot of it is a mental. Once you learn the mechanics of, you know, how to shoot the gun and swing with the target and do that, all those mechanics, it then turns into a mindset game. It turns into a mental game, right? And that's why I'm passionate about this subject because I've been doing it for the better part of 12 years now. So, anyway. We are not taught that pressure is a good thing, okay? We have to create systems. We have to develop ways in which we can use our mind to propel ourselves into the future and do and accomplish what we need to do. And we have to be able to take that pressure, run it through a mental system, and optimize our mind to get the job done. Um, Now, obviously, that weekend was not one of those weekends for me where I was able to do that. But I have been able to do it in other tournaments, um, other areas of my life. I love going to CrossFit, and I use a ton of the mental strategies from cross from uh, shooting into CrossFit with Olympic lifting and some of those things. You do them long enough, eventually it becomes a mental game and confidence to lift a, a weight, right? Um, and, you know, because we're not taught that pressure is a good thing, it inherently inhibits our ability to use it because we're never taught how to use it in some cases. Um, so for me, I'm going to win more, I'm going to do more, and I'm going to continue to use these strategies for myself. I'm going to learn how to 
optimize my mind to take pressure and use it, especially once I get back into, you know, I'm, I'm using it now for, for my regular life every day, right? There's, there's all these pressures from, from work, from building a career, from building the, starting this business, uh, you know, making sure that my family's taken care of, right? There's all that pressure. And a lot of times we have pressure coming from around us in every aspect of our lives. And we have to take that pressure and turn it into directed pressure. Just like shooting a gun, the only reason a bullet goes through the air in a straight pattern is because the pressure directs it so. Okay? It's put into a chamber, into a barrel, and all of that pressure, there's only one way out. Okay? And we have to do that with pressure in our lives. We have to take the pressure that we're using or that we, that we have in our lives, put it into a barrel, into a chamber of sorts, and direct it where we want it to go. And that's going to help us propel into achieving what we want, achieving what we're, we're trying to do. Um, now, those, those mental strategies, right, um, if, if, we're, if we use them right way, they're going to, they're going to lead us to where, what we want to do. And um, it's going to help you develop a system to get yourself back into check, right? You're not going to be so worried about winning or losing. You're going to be focused on the process to get you to what you want, whether that's winning whether that's, uh, you know, I mean, winning in, in general, or whether that's, you know, having a more successful marriage or developing your career or whatever that may be, if you can channel that pressure into, into a chamber and direct it towards that, it's, it's going to push you and propel you to the next thing. And so, you know, I want to help you and myself become masters of our mind uh, to, to do this. And so I'm going to continue to publish uh, videos like this and trainings like this. And so if, if you have any questions or, or, you know, need to reach out to me, please, I'm here. I want to be a resource to you and I want to help you as much as I possibly can. So please reach out and let's see if there's something that I can do to help you optimize your mind, optimize how to use pressure in your life to propel you to what you're trying to achieve. And uh, I leave you with that and hope you have an incredible day. We'll talk soon.